And if you'll take a look at your page and look at the schedule, there should be a random your workflow taking charge of React Native deployment stock right now. And I must say that it's lying to you. I mean, I would also like to hear this talk, but instead we're going to talk with you a bit about augmented reality. So AI, machine learning, big data, blockchain, IoT, AR, VR, we all heard all these buzzwords in recent years, aren't we? And some of them even know what they mean, and some of them, some of us even actually understands what they mean. But most of the time, we tend to think about them as something scary and way too complicated to take a look at. Uh, I was trying to find a photo of unicorn in augmented reality, but that's everything Google gave me. So you may know that augmented reality became more popular in recent years, and companies like Google and Apple invest tons of money in it. And smartphones finally became powerful enough to deal with uh, these new technologies and have all the hardware they need to be able to track a world around you. Therefore, it will be ridiculous not to use all this stuff when looking for the best place to put a piece of art on the wall. Or maybe there are other use cases, but who knows. And in this talk, we'll be looking at AR kit for Apple and the ways how we can use it with React Native. And we'll be building a simple application to hand the paintings on the wall and learning how to deal with all this newest AR technology. But first, let's start with the introduction. So, my name is Pavlo Babenko. I started as a Ruby on Rails developer a long time ago, but quickly proceeded to Ember.js and then dive into mobile development with first versions of React Native. As such, I work as a React Native consultant at XE and as a free time CTO at Perfectionist. And sometimes I even contribute to open source. So today we're talking about AR. There are more than two billion smartphones in the world. And because of that, this is the most affordable AR and VR experience to the wide audience. Um, this is the best potential for augmented reality application. But first, let me know a bit about you. How many of you do know what AR is. And you can raise your hand. Oh, good, good. And what is VR? Fantastic. What's the difference between them? <laughs> Perfect. So now I can skip all these introductions about the history of AR and VR development and origins of the term and so on and just proceed directly to the topic. By the way, have you been on this building augmented reality game with React Native Workshop yesterday? How many of you have you been? Oh, not, not that many, but I hope you had a good time and you probably know about AR more than me. But finally, let's get back to the topic. Apple and Google have released these AR development solutions within a recent year, and it took a massive effort for these companies and their development teams to create these solutions but now it should dramatically simplify our life, like for everyone else who's not a part of their core teams. Because it eliminates the need for us to remember university courses of geometry and linear algebra to be able to catch a Pokemon. But we still need to know some Objective-C or Swift or Java, or we can use a JavaScript as we have React Native. So imagine that one day an interior designer came to you and asked for some help with wall decoration. Now there's huge responsibility laying on your shoulders because you need to decide where to make the holes in the wall, to hang some paintings, because art is essential, obviously, and more importantly, which paintings should you put there? So you need to go to the gallery, take all the paintings they have and walk around the apartment trying to put each one of them and check how it will look and whether it will provide a good feng shui. Or alternatively, because you're a developer, you can write an application for this. So I hope that you have decided to write an application. Of course, it will be a React Native application. And let's check what options do we have for React Native applications and AR. So first of all, there is Vera AR. This is probably the most feature-complete, cross-platform, best advertised solution for today. It's good. I mean, it's really good. But it's closed source, and you need to get API key to use it. 
It's free, but why would you bother with API keys? Next option is Expo.js. Expo is very popular in the React Native world. In fact, they made an entrance to mobile development so much easier for all of us. And therefore, they built their own AR solution. Uh, it's currently iOS only, and it uses some ARKit binding bindings. It also uses 3.js, a famous JavaScript 3D library to construct the objects and a GL renderer to render them. But, hmm, JL, you'll see. But why? I saw we can use it directly. We can directly render our 3D objects, not to use any proxy like JL. And you're right. So while this approach might be useful and fit quite a lot of use cases, especially for the applications built on top of the Expo, this is not something we're going to look at at the moment. Well, after that, there are not so many options left. So there is React Native ARKit. This is a ARKit proper library, as you might know. It's iOS only. It was developed to a certain extent specifically for one purpose, to develop a home story application that is currently available in the App Store, and I highly encourage you to go to the App Store and try to, try to play with it. But at the moment, it's not actively maintained, and there are no plans for future development. But it's rich in features and seems to be production ready. Um, at least they've shipped it to the App Store. And it works. I've tried it. Another ARKit-only solution is React Reality. It started as an attempt to rewrite React Native ARKit to Swift, but has quickly grown into its own independent library with its own API. I like the level of control that it provides with carefully crafted components, but it lacks some of the essential and crucial features that are part of ARKit code. Like, for example, there were no heat testing uh, like a week ago. But, however, it's an active development stage, and it's open to contributions, so things might change pretty quickly. And React Native AR Core. This is the solution for support for Google Platform support. There is currently two independent proof of concepts for AR Core support with Re on React Native. Both of them are, are called the same. They are too far from being used in production. They are just a proof of concepts. But I think it's a good option for open source contributions, potential. So the winner is React Native. Given the React Native AR kit, given that there are many tutorials for Vero AR and Expo uses a GL render and 3.js, which isn't the best option, in my opinion, and all other libraries are currently draft and not ready for production use, We'll be using React Native AR Kit for this talk. And who knows, maybe some of you would like it enough for future contributions. OK, so let's start. I would assume that at this point of time, you have already created a React Native application, but not the one with create React Native app, but the real one with iOS and Android folders and access to the native code. And once it's done, you can just call yarn add React Native AR Kit and it's done. Oh, not exactly. You also need to call React Native link, but linking isn't working at the moment, so you will need some standard libraries linking, adding all these files manually, uh, importing frameworks that are essential, and don't forget to add this camera usage description permission to iOS because like, we can't use AR without camera access. But, even that we've done all this, I think we can finally go to the readme of this repo and copy a sample application code from the readme. Once you've copied it, you can start your application, build it with Xcode, and you should see something like this. So, all of this is a standard objects that are shipped as a part of React Native AR Kit. Uh, you can see that it detects shadows, uh, provides you with some debug information, and this is objects that you can work with and use in your application. Uh, if you'll take a look at what you've seen right now on this debug information, there is first option to notice is 3D access. So as it's running in debug, debug mode, you will see the 3D access to understand where is the origin of your 
AR world. And by default, it will use, so there's three different types of uh, world alignment in ARKit. By default, it will use a gravity world alignment. This, what this means is that Y axis will be parallel to the gravity. And like for, to visualize, you can imagine that I am an axis, Y axis will be my body, X plus X axis will be my right hand, minus X will be my left hand, minus Z will be in front of me, and Z will be behind me. But there is also other options supported, like gravity and heating. Well, the Y axis will stay the same, but X and Z will be moving towards the compass direction, and obviously a camera that is locked to camera orientation. You can also see a feature points uh, this is a point that ARKit has detected, and you can later interact with it, or it will, they will be used to detect some planes or images or, or something like that. So this is something that has been recognized by ARKit. Um, in the bottom right corner, there is a color temperature, so you, so you always know what color in the area where you are, and frames per second display. You can see that there are 30 frames per second, but usually there are about 60 frames per second, what this means is that there is not enough light for the camera in the room I'm currently taking with you. Um, this is a sample config for ARKit uh, taken from this demo application. You can see that we're using debug mode, and by default, ARKit will recognize horizontal planes, but you can, if you're using iOS 11.3, you can also detect vertical planes or detect both planes. And part of that, you can recognize some images that you will pass to ARKit, but we're not going to use this. And once it's detected and recognized, you can have a callbacks, and you can store information about these anchors and plane in your state or in your project. It also has a light estimation enabled that allows you to use uh, real light on your ob projected to, to your object, but by default, it's set to false, so you will need to edit manually for your project. And now, once we understood all this, we can remove all the code and try displaying our simple painting. You can see that it's just floating around in the world. You can go around it, take a look at it from a different angle, so it will stay at the same place. So painting, in this case, is basically an IR kit, the box object. It's component with fixed height and width, and it's three centimeters thin, with the image applied as a material property to it. And as, as you can see, we have fixed uh, like X and Y positions. We set them to zero, so that means that it will appear in front of the camera. And we set Z to minus one, so it will appear one meter in front of the camera. Okay, now, once we're done with this, all we need to do is add a friendly UI reminder and ship our application to the App Store. Like, we need to not, not notify users that they need to stand in two meters in front of the wall, restart the application, and they will see the painting in the real surroundings um, with my fantastic UI design. But can be so easy, right? So let's take a look at some other features that React Native AR Kit is shipped with. What if we want to make our painting stick to the surface, but always be at the center of the screen, like this? Oh, sorry. Every time I turn my phone, it will stay on the same painting, so uh, on the same plane. In this video, ARKit assumes that the plane, that the wall it found, is my iMac, <laughs> but you can potentially use a real uh, real wall. So to be able to achieve this, there is a higher order component available uh, as a part of this React Native AR kit project. It's called with projected position. And what it does, it does exactly this. On every animation frame, it checks a point on the detected plane with a heat test and place our pointing, painting onto it. First, quite good once the plane is found, which might be a problem, but it's not for our purposes. It better fits for some 3D cursor or pointer if you want to use it. So
So let's forget about it for now and instead we'll create a viewfinder and allow our user to put the painting on the detected plane once it's detected. So we're asking users to move on around. Once the plane is detected, we can press the button and the painting will be hanged. But you have probably noticed that in this video, uh, I'm cheating because I'm detecting a horizontal plane instead of the vertical plane. You can see that our painting is growing out of the table. The reason for this is odd and yet unexplainable to me, but every time I've tried to make a screen recording, AR kit just stopped detecting vertical planes. In the real world, it still works. You can play with the application later. Um, I will share the code. So in this case, we're checking whether the user can hang a painting uh, and whether we should turn the button to the green. The idea here is that we're calling this function once the plane is detected. It's called check whether it's possible to hand a painting. We're checking the center point, central point of our screen, uh, sending it to the heat test planes function, and verifying whether this point is on the plane with this heat testing. Heat testing allows you to coordinate pixels on the screen with uh, the real world AR objects like planes or anchors or box object in our case. And you can add some additional properties to it like do you want to detect an existing plane? Do you want to detect object or something like that? It will re return you the position and coordinates and Euler angles uh, as a result of this heat testing or will return you nothing if there is no information available. And once we detected this plane, once we checked that we're looking at the plane, uh, once the user is clicking on the green button, we're setting the current anchor position. And we need, in this case, we need to know the exact position where the user is looking at. So we're also hit testing it again. And we can then pass already determined anchor to our box. The reason for this, so why, why wouldn't we just pass the hit point uh, coordinates and why do we need an anchor to be passed to the box? The reason for this is a part of the position is that we need to pass for it an Euler angles property. Uh, Euler angles are three angles introduced by Leonard Euler to describe an orientation of the body with respect to a fixed coordinate system. So in our case, fixed coordinate system is a gravity. And I've tried to find some image to better explain it to you but all of them were so, com so complicated that I can't understand them, even I can't explain them to you later. So I'll better try to show you. If we'll take a look at this uh, stand, it will have Euler angles x0, y0, and z0. But my relationships with this stand will have a different Euler angles, and we need to provide the same information to our painting so it will lay out on the wall and not just grow out of it. And also you can notice that we're casting, we're adding a cast shadow property, so our box object will look more natural in the environment and it will cast shadow on the other objects, done automatically in our kit. And so far so good except that ARKit doesn't that good in detecting vertical planes, and especially if it's a white wall or just one color of the wall. Uh, there's just enough, not enough feature points for ARKit to detect this plane. And if you look at the official demo applications from Apple, almost all of them are using horizontal plane detection and putting their objects on the horizontal plane. Um, so to detect a vertical plane, you need a contrast wall, ideally with some patterns on it, or maybe a paintings already handed on it. And this experience might be frustrating for a real world users uh, that we're going to ship to our application. So let's come up with some dumb but practical solution. Let's tell the users to put their phone on the wall. So at that moment, we will know the position of our phone, and therefore we can assume that this is a wall and pass this position back to our painting to be able to handle it correctly. So we're just sticking our phone to the wall, setting a painting, and now it lays correctly and we're 
don't need to spend a ton amount of time trying to find a vertical plane. Uh, for this, we'll create another viewfinder. We'll add an ability to switch between them, and everyone will be happy. Except the one downside of this approach is that the camera might take a little bit long to focus our scene back after we've assigned an object to the wall, what you've seen in the previous video. Uh, now that we have placed it, we need some way to remove our paint painting. So we're adding a remove button. Placing a painting again, we can see a remove button on the top right corner. And once it's pressed, we just clean our screen and get into the initial position. Remove button is easy, you just need to install React Native Vector icons and add this button to the top right corner. But don't forget to rebuild your Xcode project and add the specified font to your application, to, to your project. And right now our application is almost done, but what happens if we don't want a user to get to the wall every time it wants to move the painting around? Then we need to add an ability to move it from the application with your finger. You can see that it's possible to move it with a finger. The logic behind it is very similar. Uh, it's relatively easy to do. We need to set up our pen responder to track gestures on the screen, and then use heat detection to detect our box object. So we're first checking whether the user is currently pressing on the box. And if it's pressing, we can uh, allow our pen responder to track our changes and track our movement. You can notice also that we're not using heat test planes, but we're using heat test send objects function that is also part of ARKit. Uh, this allows us to check only the box or, or the objects that we have added specifically to the screen, to the scene. Um, once we've started pen responder tracking, we're doing another heat test on every pen responder move and applying these properties to our painting position. You can also notice that the painting position Z axis isn't moving in this example. This is because we don't want to move our painting in the world, we just want to move it around the, the, our wall. So we just need to set this Z position to the same value all the time. Um, it's now much way better, but the only thing that is missing for our application to be completely available for everyone is ability to select different paintings. So we will need to add a flat list property uh, and add some information for these images. We'll need to wait until they will load and display it to the user who's been able to select different paintings. By the way, ARKit can only work with files that are present in your local file systems. This applies to images and 3D objects. Therefore, you can't use a require function or you can't use direct image URL from the web. What this means for us is that we will need to first download these URLs into application and then we will be able to show them around. Uh, we will need to use React Native file system for this and pass this property as a file pass to our material of the box object. And you can notice that there is also a props on mount property which scales, which scales our application to zero. Uh, this is used for animation, for default animation. You can see that there is a transition and every time when you're putting a, an object on the scene or when you're removing the box, it will be animated by scaling from one to zero. Okay. With so tapping the previous data set, uh, a part of the painting URL, I've added, and dimensions, obviously, I've added some information about author and title, and wouldn't it be good to show this info underneath the painting so your fellow designer always know which painting to buy? You can see the text is also a 3D object. It takes the shadow properties. It moves alongside with the painting, uh, and it's handy to display some text, obviously, <laughs> on the screen. It also has a width and depth properties, and to be able to achieve that, 
and to be able to shout that to our users, we can do this by grouping our 3D objects into the group. In this case, we will use a box for the painting, X for the text description, and wrap it into the group component. Therefore, we will be able to pass the position and Euler angles and some transition animations directly to the group object and don't bother our box and text components with this. Instead, they will have position relative to the group and not relative to the world. And we will put our text five centimeters underneath the box. Okay, with all that done, we can safely turn off debug mode and add the final feature required, a snapshot. Because it's always good to be able to take a photo of the environment with our AR objects supplied and share it with friends or the fellow interior designer or your personal art consultant. So once it's done, it's done very simple. We have a snapshot feature that's going shipped with the AR, AR kit. We also need to check permissions before using it uh, so we can actually save it to our camera roll. Uh, we will have this snapshot result. So the result will look this way. It's not a screenshot of the application. There is no UI controls on it. Uh, it's just a real world photo with the 3D objects applied to it. Finally, we are done and ready to ship it to the App Store. But hope you can now to do it too. Okay, I know what you're thinking about right now. If there is a future-rich solution that works on iOS and Android, why do we even bother with looking at something else? Like, especially if it's a library without any support and new features development? Of course, you might be right here. There is a big chance that I will use VR AR in my next AR project, and so do you. But my answer here will be very simple, because open source. I find it ridiculous for, that for such a potent niche as augmented reality, we as React Native developers have only a few options to be used. And the one that really works is closed source. And also, because the concepts are the same, it's relatively easy to switch between libraries. So if you try to run React Native AR kit, it will be very easy for you to try VR AR and vice versa. So I believe that we as a community should invest more time and resources to building and extending existing options for AR development. And I hope that next time when you'll decide to work on this project, on some AR project at all, you'll be able to contribute to one of these existing open source projects or in some of this area. Or maybe you will even add an AR core support to React Native. Thank you, and feel free to reach me with any questions. <laughs>